welcome to episode 47. I have been exploring the city of Seattle today, visited the aquarium, some art gallery, a few fun things like that, and now arrived here at Hollywood Casino. It is 2.30 p.m. and they have no games running, unfortunately. Uh, only two people on the wait list for 1-3, so I'm probably gonna head back to Caribbean Casino, get some food there, it's nice, it's cheap. Um, play, this, play some 1-3, probably just some 1-3. I'll see you guys in the hands. Let's get into the hands here. This is at Aces Poker, another one of Eric Person's uh, properties. He's got a little cute picture of his face on each chip. But let's get into it. Uh, low Jack has raised to 10, and I've got Ace King suited on the button. I re raised to 40, folds back round, and he makes the call. So we're heads up to a flop. This guy's going to be our nemesis. He crushed us this session, but get a pretty nice flop. 9, 8, 5, 2 spades. We've got a nut flush draw. Checks to me. I would usually check this back, but. Down here in America, we're definitely going to go for the bets as ranges are just going to be a lot wider than back home. So I bet out for $60. Looks pretty good. I like the size. And he makes the call. Off to a turn, which is the queen of clubs. And now he leads into us for $100. Um, if I raise all in here, I'm getting shoved. Like he's going to call 100%. So I don't think there's any merit. I've seen this line so often down here. They'll just lead turn on like a blank. And they will call it off. Like they'll, they've just turned like Queen Jack and they'll just call it off. So we're just going to call and try to improve. And we get to a river, which is the Eight of Clubs. Unfortunate. Um, hoping he's going to check it so we can get to showdown, but he just moves all in. Nothing we can do here. Uh, we are going to be losing this one. All right. We pick up Jack 10 offsuit in the cutoff and I bump things up to $15. Our friend from the last hand three bets us to 40 and given the price and we're in position kind of sucks we got such a weak hand but we got a call here so off to a flop which is okay it's ace eight seven two clubs with the backdoor flush draw as well as the gut shot and surprisingly enough he checks it over so definitely gonna start bluffing here with my gut shot i make it 35 and he quickly calls so off to a turn which is the four of spades introducing another flush draw he checks it over and I just don't think people are protecting their check back ranges too much, but this I was fairly new to this session, so I fired another bet of 120, setting up for a river shove. It's looking like about two and a half SPR, so this is probably way too big. This could be a hundred. Um, <clears throat> big line thanks for quite a while, and then makes a call. So looking for some help on the river. It is the king of hearts. No help to us. He checks it over, and I'm just gonna give up here. I think the jack of clubs kind of sucks in our hand. Um, and I just don't see him folding anything now. <laughs> like, we're trying to get him to fold queens. He's never going to fold kings or aces if he somehow trapped those. If he checked back a weak ace, he's not going to fold that. So I just give up, wave the white flag, and my opponent shows the pocket queens. Managed to hold on on the turn. Very nicely played. The under the gun straddle is live at $6. The player to their left has called and I have 10-8 suited in the small blind. I raise things up to 25 and both the straddler as well as a limper call. So we are three ways to a flop. It's pretty nice. Ace, eight, three, rainbow, one club. So we do the backdoor flush draw. I start off with a check out of position and it checks through. So off to the turn, which is the three of diamonds. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start with a small bet here of 25, try to get some value. The straddler calls and the limper folds. So we are three ways to a uh, river. Sorry, heads up to the river, which is another ace. Another really good card. I'm going to go for some pretty thin value here. I bet 35. Opponent's mulling it over, mulling it over. This is the same guy from the last two hands. And then raises us to 130. Uh. <laughs> um, I should have thought about this a bit more during the session, but... Anytime I get raised on the river at 1-3, my immediate thought is just to fold because no one bluffs like this. But this seems bluffy. <clears throat> Why wouldn't he bet an ace on the flop? But he also has done a fair amount of trapping with very strong hands during this session, so it wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him. So I don't really think a fold here is terrible, but I think that we should have spent a little bit more time thinking about it. But I do find the fold. And he's now three for three on us. <laughs> Moving things along, this is the fourth hand and it's against the same person. <laughs> we pick up pocket kings in the low jack. I raise it up to 12 and he calls on the button. We are heads up to a flop of queen jack eight, two hearts. Pretty dicey board. I'm gonna play some pot control and check it over and my opponent checks behind. Off to a turn, which is the beautiful king of diamonds. We hit our set. Definitely gonna start betting here. I fired up for 20. 
Oh, my opponent now raises to 50. Um, every raise I've seen, by the way, in Seattle has been tiny. Like, way, 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 way too small. Um, yeah, this is kind of a little bit gross, but he could have ace-10. Could have 10-9, and then just check back the flop, but no way I'm folding a king, pocket kings here. So I toss in the call, we're off to the river, which is the four of diamonds, complete brick. I check it over, and now he fires out a bet of 135. Slightly over pot. Little bit dicey. Little bit dicey, but... I don't know, I just think he bets 10-9 on the flop every time. And I think he bets ace-10 quite often as well on the flop when checked, too. Um... Yeah, I just think I'm going to go for it here and try to get max value against, you know, a hand like King, Queen, King, Jack, maybe. I don't really know what he's raising on the turn, though, but I decide to go for it. I jam all in, and we fade the snap call. So now we're hoping for a call, unless he's tanking with 10-9. But eventually he just says, I don't think Queen, Jack is good here, and folds. I don't know if he had Queen, Jack. It's pretty crazy to check back top two on this board, but... Happy to finally win a pot against this guy. <laughs> Moving things along, we are finally not playing against the same person, but we are looking down at four limbs and I have ace, deuce of hearts in the big blind. I've been starting to up my raise sizes because it's still going super multi-way. I bumped up to 25. Under the gun calls, so does low jack and everyone else folds. We're three ways to a flop of ace, five, eight, two diamonds. Out of position, definitely gonna start with a check here. So I check it over. Under the gun now bets $20, one quarter pot. Low jack calls, and so do I. So off to the turn, which is the four of spades. Pretty nice. We pick up a gut shot now to go along with our top pair. Just going to check it over, and under the gun now fires out for $40. Less than one third. Nothing to do here but call, especially after low jack is also called. Not feeling great about it, though. Off to the river, which is a beautiful three of diamonds. The front door flush does get in, but we do have a straight now. I check it over. Under the gun now checks, and now low jack fires out a bet of 75 Another tiny bet, less than one third. Um, yeah, with a straight, we're just gonna have to pay it off. So I toss in the call, under the gun folds, and low jack shows the nine six of clubs. Looks like he had a gut shot. Yeah, just a gut shot. So yeah, pretty nice pot coming our way. So down here, you can straddle to, I believe, any amount. So button is straddled to $10. Small blind, big blind, under the gun, and under the gun plus two have all called as well. And I've got 10 eight of spades in the hijack. I raise things up to $70, and we only get the small blind calls. He is the nemesis from the last 84 hands. And we go to a flop, which is pretty nice. King, queen, eight, two clubs. Pretty good for my range, and we do a bottom pair. Uh, happy to check this one back. Until he leads out for 125, which is like two-thirds pot. That is strong. That is really strong to limp call the small blind and then lead out a king high flop. Two-thirds. Yeah, um... I have to decide right now on the flop if I'm going to call his turn all in because he's never checking back turn. And with bottom pair, I just have so many better hands here. I, I just want at least top pair. You know, like king nine I can call down, but... With 10-8, no real back doors. Just going to have to let it go, and he's going to get us again. <laughs> hey, raising things up with King Jack suited here in the hijack, and we get a caller from the small blind who is, once again, the same player. Off to a flop of 10-8-4 rainbow. Could bet here, but I think checking's all right as well. Off to a turn, which is really nice. The jack of clubs, we get top pair. Now he fires out a pot size bet of 25. Nothing to do here but call. Not loving it though. And off to the river, which is the three of clubs. So the backdoor flush does get in. And he fires out another bet. Pretty hefty as well. 65. Um, against this player, I just don't think we can fold. He has been barreling off crazy wide. And just so often. So I toss in the call and he mucks. Looks like I'm going to need to start calling down a lot more down here in Seattle. And the rest of America. <laughs> Moving things along, we pick up pocket kings yet again. Low Jack has raised to 15 over a limp, and I 3-bet to 50. Folds back to Low Jack, who makes the call. By the way, I still haven't seen a 4-bet here in Seattle. Not once. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so we're heads up to a flop of 8-6 deuce rainbow. He checks it over, I fired out a bet of 30, and immediately get check raised to 100. Um, we're just gonna have to go with it, but I don't want to blow him off his bluff, so I just flat planning to get it in on any turn. 
Turn is the Ten of Hearts. My opponent jams. I call and he goes, well, looks like it's a classic cooler. <laughs> Go to the river with the Nine of Clubs and my opponent shows also Pocket Kings. That comment made me think he had pocket aces. <laughs> I was so worried, but um, I suppose I'm happy to chop this one up. Okay, so middle position has been playing around chips. She's got 15 in her hand, and then 20, and then 25, and then 20, and then back to 25, and then raises. I look down at the hijack at pocket queens, and I should know better than this, but I re-raised to $75. I know better than this. Rolls back around to her, who jams all in, and I still know better than this. <laughs> Go ahead and make the call. The most I should have lost this hand was $25, but <laughs> I'm an idiot. I was also quite card dead this session. And I don't know if it was card dead, but the hands an hour are pretty slow, so it feels like you're not playing too much. But go to flop ace, six, four, eight, ace, and my opponent shows quad aces. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Moving things along, we've got a middle position raised to 10. Hijack, who is a very old man, but pretty crazy. Uh, three bets to only $25. We're in the big blind with pocket fives. Um, if I was scared of middle position 4-betting, which I'm not because I've yet to see a 4-bet, there's something interesting you can do here. I could raise to $40, and the middle position would only be able to call or fold, same as hijack, as they limit uh, raises to 3 times per street. So I could just make it $40 and be safe to see a flop for that price. But I'm not worried about middle position 4-betting because I've yet to see one. Also, they had a 25-25 game where it's $300 max bet. I would even play that. <laughs> But off the flop, which is 4-3, deuce, two diamonds. Pretty good flop. Check it over, and the three better puts out a bet of 40. Against half pot, I'm just going to call. It's a little bit smaller I'd raise, but against the sizing, just going to call. And middle position also makes a call. So we're still three ways to a turn, which is the eight of hearts. I check it over, middle position checks, and now hijack fires on another half pot bet of 105. We've got about 10 outs here, and I can lead a lot of these rivers. Like any six, five, or ace, I'd feel pretty comfortable leading. And being fairly sure that I'm going to get paid off. So <clears throat> with that in mind, I call the 105, middle position folds, and we're off to the river, which is the king of hearts. Ah, I check it over, and my opponent quickly checks behind, and we're up against pocket jacks. All right, we got king jack suited again in early position, facing a limp. I raise it up to 15, and we got three callers, including the limper. So... Going four ways to a flop of king jack three, flop and top two, and the backdoor flush draw. Uh, multi way, definitely gonna bet this. I start with a bet of 20, and I get two callers and the button and the original limper. Off to a turn, which is the five of spades, pretty much a blank. Uh, checks to me, gonna keep betting here. I size up to 90. Trying to get it all in by the river, button folds, and under the gun makes the call. Off to a river, which is the nine of hearts, probably my second least favorite card besides an ace. Like queen 10 is the most likely draw, and I'm pretty sure under the gun is going to call that out of position. So he checks over to me, but top two is still too strong. Got to go for some value. So I shove all in, and he folds. So chipping up a little bit here. Facing about three limbs, we have a suited ace on the button. I raise things up to $20, and we get all the limpers call. So we're four ways to a flop of ace, ace, queen, two clubs. Checks to me, I'm just going to check this one behind, play some pot control, or ace isn't that strong enough to go for three streets against three players, so I check it back. Turn is the ten of hearts. Checks again to me, going to start going for some value here. I bet 25, and I get two callers, so three ways to a river, which is pretty nice. Four of diamonds, we managed to boat up. Checks to me, I don't think anyone has much here, maybe a queen. Like, I can't see them having an ace here, so I'm going to size down a little bit to 100. Try to get a crying call from a queen, maybe a 10. Uh, under the gun fold, and middle position is in the tank. Hoping for a call now, hoping for a call, and eventually he tosses it in. I show, and it's good. He actually had like ace eight offsuit or something, which is surprising to see. Um, players just don't seem to want to call down in these games. They're quite tight post flop, uh, especially when the stack is like getting big or the bets start getting big. Just not willing to put their stack in. Look at that, we pick up Ace King suited again. Love this hand. I raise it up to 15, and only the small blind calls, who's the older guy who had, I can't remember. But we go to a flop of Queen 10, 8, two diamonds. So we have the nut flush draw as well as a gut shot. Really nice flop. 
checks over to me. I start with a bet of 20 and my opponent makes the call. Off to the turn, which is the six of diamonds. Very nice. What's even nicer is small blind now leads out for $100. Almost 1.5x pot on a donk. Um, I really want to raise this, but like it just seems so bluffy. <laughs> this $100 lead over here. So I just call, try to keep his bluffs in. We head to a river, which is the seven of hearts. Nothing changes. And now he checks it over. Um, I just want to get a tiny bit of value. Maybe he two paired on the six or something. So I bet out for 125, pretty small, and he snap calls. So definitely missed some value there, but I show. He doesn't show his, and it is good. And that is it for my Aces Poker session. That is it for episode 47. I hope you guys enjoyed. I had a blast playing over at Aces Card Room. I think that's what it's called. Uh, another casino, I think, owned by Eric Person. Uh, unfortunately, booked another loss of $550, but I won my first ever high hand bonus for $100. So adding that to the total, I was in for $1,500, out for $1,050 for a loss of $450. Not bad. Managed to claw my way back out of that big $1,000 hole. Uh, just wasn't making too many hands, just kind of kept topping off for $100 here, $200 there. Uh, it's going to bring the bankroll from 11200 ish down to 10800 ish um, I'll put the numbers down there. Uh, if I continue on this little mini downswing, it is going to be a very short road trip. I'm going to finish up in Portland, but we know that's not going to happen. I'm going to run it back up, and thank you so much once again for watching, and I'll see you guys all in episode 48.